Good morning and welcome to the oldest city in Montenegro, which is none other than Kotor Montenegro, which is where we're gonna be spending our day today. Currently heading from our Airbnb, walking about 30 minutes into the actual old town of Kotor, originally built by the Romans. So very, very historic city, of course. And we're gonna be giving a full review of Kotor from our experience. Um, ultimately seeing is it worth visiting, putting on your itinerary, and if so, really what to expect and first, what we're gonna be doing is heading up to the ladder of Kotor. So Kotor obviously is this old city, and surrounding the city, there is about three uh, miles in total length. This wall then circles and actually goes up on kind of the local mountainside, and it's supposed to have some of the most beautiful views of the city below and the surrounding areas. So kind of going there first to scope out the area, but we're super excited. I hope you are too. Let's go. Let's go. To the entrance of the ladder of Kotor. The total uh, height is about 940 meters tall, like from here to the tallest point, with 70 switchbacks. So quite a bit of hiking to get to the top, which is what we're gonna do today. Um, and we will say, so to enter, it's about um, eight euros per person. But if you come before 7 a.m. and after 8 p.m., it's free because the worker is there at the gate, so you can basically enter for free. Otherwise, eight euros per person. And uh, one other tip that we noticed walking in, just to be very careful if you're coming, there's a lot of slippery rocks. So make sure that your shoes have good traction because we've seen some people slip and fall and already hurt themselves. And bring lots of water. And yeah, be sure to bring lots of water because of course, especially if you're coming in the summer. Um, but we've already seen some pretty cool views. Should get even better as we go up. So let's go. guys we finally made it to the top of the hike which is San Giovanni Castle this is originally a Byzantine castle uh, later kind of expanded by the Venetians which are kind of all the walls here um, so this is the top of the hike kind of your peak and in our experience you know here there's a woman selling some refreshments which is really great some fresh water sodas and beer if you're up for it we obviously stopped to take a lot of video so if we went non-stop it probably would have been about 40 minutes and there's actually been people who have ran to the top and the fastest recorded time from bottom where we were to the very top here is nine minutes. So that's the it's absolute crazy. fastest that you could get here. Uh, but realistically, 40 minutes with no stops, but you will be taking lots of stops, a lot of beautiful things along the way. And now we're gonna head down to the city first, take a look at this view. breaking a cardinal rule from childhood mm -hmm. and we're actually having dessert before lunch so we stopped here at a top rated gelato place called Marshall's here in, in Old Town Kotor so refreshing after a hike and we've already tried a couple bites and it's so good so first in this cup we have raspberry and lime it's starting to melt already because it's pretty hot and because they're out of chocolate now we have vanilla and walnut 
Yes, yeah, um, so, so good. Super good if you're in Kotor and you're looking for yeah. gelato, definitely check out Marshall's. And then right after this, we're actually gonna go grab lunch at a barbecue place for maybe somewhat traditional uh, Montenegrin yes. food. Came highly, highly uh, rated as well. And we're gonna be going there right after. It's outside of the old town of Kotor a little bit. So we'll do a little bit of walking there. And then right after lunch, hopefully uh, getting some beautiful additional views at the town of Peras, not far away from Kotor. So super excited and super hungry. So let's eat. A little bit crazy, but we're here at Barbecue Tanja. It's about a five minute walk outside of Old Town Kotor. A little bit of traffic right in front of us, so sorry for the noise. Um, but basically, as soon as you walk in, you can tell it's super popular place, yeah. crowded, very little seating, but the smell is amazing. All the meat is barbecued fresh, and you can definitely tell. Um, it's kind of crazy, you gotta like, you need to know what you want, order, and just kind of go through, but, but still really good staff, just kind of messing with you a little bit. And we finally ordered, and we basically got this mixed meat platter where the, the um, chef or the cook said, was some more local style um, barbecue. And our Airbnb host said it is also a little bit more local style. Yes. Looks super good. Uh, some veggies on the side as well. Yo, we <laughs> and there's the there's the owner. <laughs> he's mad he's that trying to we're make not us, eating. Yeah, he's mad that we're recording and not eating, but because we want to share with you guys, but we are super hungry. This we're about super to good. eat. Okay. So now we've got to eat. just flown by kind of crazy um, finished up our meal awesome food the guy gave us like some extra food and only charged us 15 euros it's supposed to be like 20 25 he yeah. charged like 15 so awesome guy awesome place definitely recommend, definitely recommend. barbecue uh, Tanja. Tanja we'll have a link to them in the description section and right after we actually just took a taxi got out and we're now here in Perast Perast is a small also old town here in Montenegro, about 15 to 20 minutes away from the center of, or right outside of Old Town Kotor, depending on traffic. So we just got here, and while the town itself seems nice, what this place is really known for are these two islands, one natural, one man-made here off the shore, which you can actually kind of see right here uh, from the shore. And we're gonna be taking a drone over to kind of give you guys some shots, because one of the things that you can do here in, uh, in Kotor, or even here Perest, is take a boat tour. And a lot of these boat tours that we've seen will actually take you from Old Town, or in the area, out to these two islands, as well as this place called the Blue Cave, which is this sort of like blue, like, I don't know, luminescent um, cave that's also here in the area. Might be like a half day to a full day excursion, so that's part of the reason we didn't go. But we wanna kind of show you, because this might be a really, you know, part of it at least, which might be a nice kind of little addition, so. Let's go take the drone. walking and hiking in the heat, we finally decided to cool off in a local, basically the water, not really a beach. And that's something I want to bring up that here in Perest and Kotor, a question that we've got and we've heard is people wondering about kind of the swimming. So the water here in this area, in this kind of cove or this bay, is very, very clean. However, when you look at it, it looks kind of dark or maybe a little bit murky, but it's not, it's very clean and we'll show you some. It's cool, it's not freezing, it's, yeah. it feels amazing. It's not freezing cold, it's cool, very salty, but very nice feeling. 
but it's not very beachy. It's much more like these these stone docks, and you kind of jump off the dock, or just kind of walk into the water, and gradually turns very kind of a little bit more rocky. If you're interested in more sandy beaches in Montenegro, that's more going to be your Sveti Stefan or Budva, kind of down the coast a little bit more, but still really wonderful to swim. I mean, really great, and it's also I think underhyped, so that's also a little bit more chill. But man, it has been an amazing, amazing day. I think Kotor has really impressed both of us. Yes. Um, Even really though it was smaller than I expected, there was so much to do inside the town and outside as well. So love yeah, it. Yeah, really special. So if you're really big into obviously hiking, history, more a little bit chill, I think Kotor is a really, really great option for you. Maybe if you're more into a little bit more kind of like the party scene, beaches, things like that, maybe more Budva or maybe some parts of Croatia. And if you're curious to see how Kotor Montenegro compares to other cities in Croatia, be sure to subscribe because we are currently on a road trip up the Balkan coast uh, going north along the Adriatic Sea. And we're gonna be sharing each of our experiences along the way, similar to this. So if you liked it, be sure to subscribe, like the video. If you know of someone considering coming to Montenegro, be sure to be a good friend or family member and share this with them. And as always, uh, if you have any questions or anything you'd like to add for other travelers, let us know in the comment section below. And thank you so much for watching and your support. God bless, I look forward to seeing you in the next adventure. Ciao. Ciao.